What's up, strongest men, women, and children from blocks all around the world? I am my block strongest man, and tonight I have for you an extra special guest, the incomparable Jessica Fibbin. Ciao, homie. Welcome back to My Block Strongest Man, where we bring strong men into the mainstream by discussing all of the latest strong man events in the greatest analytic detail that you'll find anywhere on YouTube. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to this channel. Make sure to comment below whether you agree or disagree with my videos. I love the engagement and I respond to every single comment. Now on to today's topic. So yeah. question, what training tips would you have for somebody like me in learning how to do your favorite event? Let's call it Mauser. If I wanted sure. to learn, learn how to do it and get good at it. Yeah, I would find someone that knows what they're doing. I cannot stress enough. Um, basic, you know, what I talked about earlier about finding a crew of people that really know what they're doing. Um, that to me, for, for what I, for, you know, kind of what I experienced was the most important thing that I ever did. Not only just finding a coach, um, I was really lucky to find Kale really early on. Um, and he's been my coach for years and years now. Um, and we really gelled almost just right from the beginning. So finding a coach um, that you that you kind of gel with that will help you program stuff, but also finding kind of in person someone to kind of help you. It can be really hard sometimes for people that aren't in areas that have a big strongman presence. Thankfully, that's changing um, even over the last couple of years, especially a lot of the CrossFit boxes are adding uh, more strongman implements, which is great. Um, but actually finding someone that can help you kind of one-on-one -on -one with technique um, or traveling or being willing to travel to other people to kind of have them help you in person. I don't know that anything actually replicates doing that um, with other people. So it was the biggest change for me and it was the biggest thing that, that impacted my career was finding uh, people that actually knew what they were doing and were also serious about it like I was. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. So as we said earlier, um, you know, you have other competitors who talk about, I was doing great in that competition until I ran into Jessica. So is that, is <laughs> that, something? that you're just buttering me up? No, Nobody people, two people said that. <laughs> so oh, I won't say their names. So right. do, is that something like, do you, do you consciously want your approach and your performance to make that statement or it's just a happy coincidence? Um, this will sound kind of silly, but I always have the approach that I'm just going to try my best. And if I do really well, I do really well. And if I don't, I don't let that super affect me. Um, I am ironically for as much as I have competed, I don't consider myself that competitive with other people. Um, I consider myself ultra competitive with myself. Now I do, I do, I like records as far as like overhead records. That's not, that's not, that shouldn't be surprising just because I think they can be a lot bigger than they are, especially for the women's side. I don't, um, I've never tried to like be someone that's intimidating to other people. I think that's stupid. Um, <laughs> there probably are people that have that approach. That's not my approach. I'm, I'm fairly friendly. I think people would more or less describe me that way. I really like people and I really like strong man. So um, I like when I go to these shows to talk to people, I almost do that to a fault where sometimes I'm like, Oh my God, I've been talking, you know, for an hour and I need to go sit down. I have a fucking event, you know, I'm sorry. And like, you know, an hour and it's like, I need to go focus. So um, I approach all of these things never as like, I'm better than anyone or I'm going to do things that other people can't. I never approach anything like that. I consider, um, I consider being being humble and knowing that you're that you're that you're gifted or good at things are not really the same thing. I think you can be humble. Um, I mentioned Donna Moore before. Donna Moore is one of my not only is she my strongman hero, but she also is my just um, how she conducts herself hero. She's always been that way to me. She's always she's not afraid to say what she thinks, but at the same time, she's above the fray as far as she doesn't feel like she has to intimidate people. She doesn't feel like if you're warming up with Donna Moore, who's the strongest person, blah, blah, blah. I mean, she acts like you're just anybody else. She's not going to be like, I need, you know, more time with that because I'm who I am. She doesn't act like that. You don't need to act like that. So I've always tried to model my behavior at these shows, especially with other people after her, um, because I think she does the best at um, being inclusive of all people and being friendly to all people. And she's just legit like a normal person if you go up and talk to her she'll talk to you back she'll take pictures with you she's never tries to act like she's anything more than just who she is so i've always tried to model that at all of these shows and 
you know, talk to everyone. And I try to also give back to Strongman in certain ways where, you know, if we're having a local contest and promoting it, I try to be there. I try to help judge. I mean, I'm not above loading weights or, or, or being somebody's scribe. I worked USS Nationals when Chris Vascio did it in Columbus and I worked for like nine hours. It's very sweaty. I'm not wow. above doing any of that stuff. So I think all of that stuff is really important for, for other women to see that even when you get to a, a, a higher level, a pro show, um, that sort of a thing that you're still, you're still just one of them and you're still going to be there to encourage them to also get to that level. You're not above any of that stuff. So that's my approach to it. I know there are some other people that have a more aggressive approach and that's them too. And it's not necessarily wrong. It's just not who I am. Um, we have a big giant joke that I uh, under promise and over deliver. So I, I'm always very self deprecating almost to a fault where I'm just like, I don't know. David Waters at Mammoth called me a sandbagger on the block. And I was like, it's not sandbagging. <laughs> It's just not, I don't, I don't always have that type of confidence, which is funny because people just assume that I do. So I have a great coach who really helps me along with that stuff. And really, you know, I kind of lean on him sometimes for him to be able to, to give me some of that confidence. But I really think it's important for people to kind of approach the sport as that inclusive, you know, that inclusive manner where everyone, um, people like Donna are just like the rest of us. I mean, she's just really strong. So <laughs> Yeah, that's a super cool approach. Um, so, yeah. I mean, even if you would never hold it over anybody's head, just privately, how important is legacy to you? Like, people would consider you in the GOAT conversation, or at least I'll make up a term, the GOAT, the greatest of our time. Yeah, I like I like that. So it's like, to me, I feel like people can have different impacts on the sport. You know, it's kind of like, is Michael Jordan the best basketball player who's ever lived? Probably, but there's also arguments for other people. I mean, he was he was definitely the greatest basketball player, in my opinion, of that time. But other people have had other lasting impacts on basketball, not just Michael Jordan. So Donna Moore is to me or Kristen or, or Andrea, some of these people are definitely the strongest either now or maybe forever. Who knows, you know, but at the same time, I feel like other people can have lasting impacts on the sport in different ways. So if I'm never a world's strongest woman in that respect, or I never beat Donna Moore at anything ever, that's okay too, because I feel like I can have an impact on the sport. Maybe I'm the person that gets the women's pro class to where it needs to go. Maybe I'm the person that actually follows through with trying to get more attempts, more international opportunity. Maybe my goal in Strongman is actually to be a promoter in, for women's classes. Maybe that's actually what I'm supposed to be doing rather than just competing for the next 10 years. And I think all of those things kind of go hand in hand. So if you're never, it, only one person is ever going to be at the top. I mean, argue, give or take, but I mean, only one person's going to be there. What is everyone else doing? Everyone else can have a lasting impact or a legacy on the sport that isn't necessarily that. Um, and that's kind of what most people probably actually need to figure out because not everyone's going to be world's strongest woman. You're just, you're just not, it's just, <laughs> It's, it's a contest. There are winners and losers and not everyone's going to be that person. So what can you do for the sport as well as try to be strong? That's super insightful for real. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, so we're, we'll kind of wrap it up here and I'm very sorry for keeping you so long, but you're very yeah. interesting. Um, what do you like most about the sport? Um, I'll say two things. Um, earlier on, I would have told you my favorite thing about strongman is the fact that unlike powerlifting or other sports like that, Generally speaking, outside of max attempts, you don't get to pick your own weights for stuff. And so that was something earlier on in the sport that really drew me to Strongman because you don't have to, um, rather than me going to USS Nationals, which was the first major contest I ever did, first big one, they had a 500 pound, like 13 inch axle deadlift. And at the time when I, when I, when I, when I had that event, I was like, I can't do this. I'm never going to get there. I'm going to zero everything, that kind of, and so having this number that like USS national said, that's the minimum. That's what it's going to be. You don't, there's no choice. That's it really makes people push harder for a number that they probably would have. Sometimes when I see people on programs and they're like, I've only increased my bench a pound in three years or something. And it's like the difference with strongman is that you can't do that. Like it, you literally have to be pushed or pigeonholed into these numbers for these different shows. And I also like the fact with strongman that everything is is different. It's constantly changing. It may not be as as silly as a salmon toss, but you know we have you know kind of standard events. But then promoters are allowed to basically change them at any given time or make their own events. So I didn't, I wasn't personally drawn to sports that are that are predictable. So Olympic lifting with same two or powerlifting with three, et cetera, et cetera. I really like the fact that it's always changing. Um, and it's always pushing you to kind of do things that you didn't think you could do or didn't know and things you don't like to do, you know, grip and medleys and that sort of thing. Everyone likes to do that, stuff, but, you, but you're gonna. 
So having to kind of be, do these things that you don't really care for doing um, at the same time were all like things that I thought were really fascinating, um, kind of very special to, to this sport in and of itself. Yeah, it's interesting how uh, specta spectators, from their point of view, we kind of um, uh, clamor on your behalf. Like World's Strongest Man, Colin Bryce, specifically said, we're not going to use these anvils, and then specifically use the anvils. Right. And, <laughs> and, you know, fans are like up in arms, but every strong man and strong woman I've spoken to loves the... Uh, in love it. Yeah, they they love like uh, not knowing what to expect. So it's really we've asked for a couple of the promoters have asked us. You know, they a lot of times the good ones ask for at least anonymous feedback of some kind of feedback from their shows or ask people kind of really what they want and consistent feedback over the last two years. It kind of comes in and out. You know, there's like cycles for things. Um, consistent feedback for shows for the last two years have asked for odd implements have asked for different things have asked for um things where you make stuff up and I, i'm lucky i'm lucky that I, I work with a gym owner here um whose name is jim at um unbreakable athletics academy which is the gym that i lift at um and he is very much into um historical feats of strongman he's doing a denny stone replica lift he's doing oh, nice. he, did, he did a hercules hold but he did it with hay bales where he had to hold these hay bales out so he's very much into finding these weird events and that's why him and i really gel um, for a couple of different reasons but over the last couple of years people have really started asking for going back to some of these weird lifts that aren't just a log a yoke a farmer a st i mean so you can do some of that too um but people really start to enjoy and really start to look for events that have these things that they've never done before so i really like that that's becoming more of a thing that people are starting to push almost to go back to kind of where it started from. Um, and the fish toss was, was a great example of just something that was actually a, a well-executed, fun, strongman event that people have talked about now for years. So it's yeah. no reason that we can't do more stuff like that. Yeah, not at all. Um, what, are your hobby, what are your hobbies outside of strength training? I have, um, I work at the gym and so I, I do that. I, I run an account called um, You Look Like a Man, which I don't know if I would call it so much of a hobby any longer. So, I started this account called you look like a man that basically was meant to be a joke at the time. Um, and it's got about 75,000 followers on Instagram right now. And I sort right. of repost all of these like ridiculous things that a lot of guys, a lot of guys, sometimes women, but a lot of guys say, and so you look like a man has kind of taken on my, my, my hobby interests. I sell silly t-shirts that go along with some of the things that people say. And so that's probably what I would call, my hobby, which I use that term very loosely, but outside of that, I have pubs and they're definitely my hobby. So nice. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> yes, like I, yeah. I need to get some uh, social media marketing tips from you. I'm nowhere near right. that number. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got, I, I kind of fell into this and then I kind of had to teach myself how to do that. I did some social media marketing with my last job. I used to work for a couple of nonprofits um, before that, but I did some social media marketing with them. And so it's been kind of interesting to kind of teach myself how to do um, some of that and kind of what people are, how, how, how to make all that kind of work for you. It's sort of self-taught, but. Awesome. Yeah. So well, what's next and exciting in your future that you'd like to share? Next and exciting in the future, we have the um, Max Dumbbell attempt that's coming up in the end of April for um, Anthony Furman's show that he's doing with Strength League Collective um, on my left arm, which is going to be very exciting. And then after that, um, I've signed up to do the Rainier um, Pro in August in Washington. Somewhere in there, um, World Ultimate Strongman is coming apparently to Vegas, maybe in September. Again, we don't know. Um, I think it's supposed to be in September, but that, I think, sounds like a very exciting show um, for World Ultimate Strongman to be in Vegas. Um, so I think that'll be another open class show. So those are the, those are the closest things on the radar right now that, that seem to be pretty exciting coming up. All right, cool. And then my last yeah. question is just uh, take this opportunity to tell everybody how they can follow you, anything you'd like to promote, sponsorship, sure. anything. Sure. So my Instagram, which is full of terrible training videos, basically don't get too excited over that. It's <laughs> See, I'm very motivational, very motivational. Uh, it's filthy underscore fithin, which is F-I-T-H-E-N. Um, and then you look like a man is all of those words with periods in between. So it's you period look like a man period with periods in between. Those are my two main social media accounts um, that I'm on. Um, and so if people want to get in contact with me, those are the best ways to do it. All right, cool. And if I go uh, start liking posts on you look like a man, that doesn't mean I uh, encourage that sort of behavior, does no. it? No, no. It's, it's funny when you have kind of a negative, like an account that's like that. People are like, I'm liking this post, but not because I like it, but because, of, yeah. So I, we get the whole thing. It is kind of a funny thing, but 
we talk about a lot of interesting stuff on there sometimes. All right, cool. Um, so once again, thank you for spending all this time with me. We sure. talked about so many interesting things. My audience is going to love it. And uh, thanks once again. Maybe we'll do it again sometime after your next comp. Absolutely. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for having me on. Awesome. Have a great night. You too. All Bye. right. Thanks. So if you like this video and haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing using that button right there. And also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there. This one is the one that YouTube thinks that you will like the best. And this one is the one that I think you will like the best. As always, share this with everyone. And until next time, ciao, homie.